Hala hala, it's your boy George Billion here and as always, every single Monday we're up and about to do what we love to do the most and you know one of my purposes and mandates in the country of Zimbabwe where I was born and to the world at large is to be a voice that people can hear that people will relate with that people will once upon a time look back and say wow we learned a lot from George and how practically he shared his wisdom and his knowledge with us to impact our lives to become different. Now, my mandate and core purpose on this planet is to provoke, is to inspire and equip people by what I have learned on this journey so far called life. And what I've learned is what I want to share with you. This is why every Monday we have a special show we have on Capitalk called Hustle Hard where I begin to share some of the nuggets, some of the things that I'm currently learning, some of the things I'm going through, some of the things I've been through, some of the things I have learned over the many years so that people who watch this can actually begin to implement them and to better their lives. So today we're on our way to Capitalk this beautiful country called Zimbabwe which is growing every single day there's so much impact happening and a lot of things are changing and on the topic today we're going to be talking about growth if you're not growing you're dying slowly if you're not growing you definitely are in a comfort zone and the less you grow less you'll ever be able to achieve because one thing called time is not on your side so hustle so hard today we're going to be talking about growth and this is going to be a little self-retrospect on your life are you comfortable like we always say nothing grows in the comfort zone nothing so once you're in a comfortable place you stop growing and when you stop growing there's nothing good that you're ever going to achieve become Today is going to be absolutely amazing on our way to Capitalk and um, it's great to see um, all of you who have subscribed. Keep on subscribing, keep on following the Hustle Hard, the School Run Diaries, all this content that we've put on this page to benefit you. And what I hope and what I pray for, especially for you, is that you actually apply these things that I share. These, whichever year you watch this, will be beneficial. You can sit down with family, friends, and actually benefit from them. It's your boy, George Billionaire. Let's go. Hustle hard. Yours truly, GB. We're getting into our hustle hard, and we're hustling, hustling right here. We always hustle with George Billionaire, taking us through the steps, the life, and everything. But George, how are you doing? How was the weekend? Um, hala hala. It's your boy, George Billionaire, mm -hmm. with Nyasha today on Capitalk. And it's always amazing Monday. And my, uh, the weekend was amazing, Nyasha. Mm -hmm. I had a masterclass. The masterclass we've been talking about the past couple of weeks into a month mm -hmm. uh, was absolutely amazing. Okay. We were talking about how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And that was a jam-packed full class. And we had a good time. You okay. know, other than that, um, you know, I was out watching my kids play sport, doing work. I mean, the temperatures are now coming up, so we're a bit busy on the air conditioning side. Oh, yeah. No, uh, uh, it's summer now. Yeah, we need to make the weather behave. So, yeah, it's been a bit hectic now as we get into summer. But otherwise, that was about the weekend. Mm -hmm. And Monday it is. It's time to get back. Into the hustling mood. To fill people's tanks up so that they can go on this thing called life. Yes. A little different with some nuggets, some knowledge, some wisdom for mm -hmm. them to implement and become what God purposed them to be, which is not average, like we always say. Mm -hmm. We were born to be great, we were born to be winners, and we need to implement these things that we hear so that you know we can experience that change in our life. Now let's take a recap from last week. Your thoughts shape your reality and you were talking about just having a thought process that is 
uh, veered on success, understanding that what you think, I do not understand that what you think can actually come to life until I started seeing it. And I started realizing, oh my God, did I just, I thought this and it happened. So sometimes fear is that thing that we think and we're saying, what am I going to do? Oh, I'm not going to be good at this. And then you're not good at it. And then you think you're not good at it, but it was actually just your thought process. True. Everything in life begins with a thought. Mm -hmm. Everything in life begins with a thought. So to everybody who is listening to us or watching us, um, the computer, the car, anything that you see constructed again as a thought. Now with people now, some of the things that hold you back are also thoughts. We're saying fear. And we've given the acronym of fear as false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Yeah. And, that, and that appearance happens in somebody's mind. So there's somebody who is watching us or listening to us who says, ah, I can never start a business. Mm -hmm. I'll never be a great entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I could never employ people. I can never be a makeup artist. I don't think I'll be good at this. You know what? There's so many people doing it already and I'm going to be the umptieth one. Therefore, there's no point doing it. Mm -hmm. So well, what I love so much and I always refer to the word of God, it always says, according to your faith, shall things happen to you according in matthew 9 29 you know according to your faith things will happen to you and it also goes on to say as a man thinketh so shall he be so so shall he or she be okay right so your thoughts play a pivotal role in where you end up mm -hmm. so when you begin to think yourself as a winner and a champion your thoughts will manifest in reality so fear um, is something that was given to you by somebody, by either what you saw, what you heard. It was fed into your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. Because when we're born, we don't, we're not born with fear. You only get to see fear somewhere or you hear something that then limits you. But this is why it's important to be listening here on Hustle Hard. We are fearless people here. We are trying to tell you that fear only exists in your mind. And if you delete that fear from your mind, you'll be able to do a whole lot more than you actually could ever think or imagine. Mm -hmm. There are many years ago, before I started my journey of entrepreneurship, I possibly thought I was going to be successful. But trust you me, I never thought I would have gone the route I went. But because I listened to certain people, my dad was at the city council. Mm -hmm. My mom was a social worker at a nursery school. But none of them, um, ever encouraged me to become you know, a great business person except of course you know encouraging me to start off my side little hustles as I began mm -hmm. but I tell you I got rid of fear from what I listened to and what I read and what I learned from others so the person I am today is a sum total result of the things I fed on right getting rid of fear in my <coughs> mind and this is what has caused me to be where I am today so fear exists in your mind the spirit of limitation only exists in your mind. Yes. And if you're not going to have a positive outlook to life and a growth mindset, you will never become what you're supposed to do. So everything, success is an inside job mm -hmm. and it begins with you. But if you're never going to improve your mental state, you will never actually become anybody of, 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 of growth. Let me start to today's topic of if you're not growing, you, you're shrinking, right? How far true is it that people that do not have expansion strategies are likely not going anywhere? Mm. If you're not, because we're talking about fear. So there's the fear now yeah. of if I do this, what if I fail? Nyasha's doing it, George is doing it, uh, Nigel's doing it. So if they are successful. What if I'm not, I'm the fourth one who's not successful in this? So how far true is it that people that don't have that, ex that expansion strategy for life or business are likely to go anywhere? You know, the mindset um, of winners is one that is positive and has a positive outlook to things. Mm -hmm. And whenever you are fearful of doing something, you've already lost. Called winning or becoming successful, it never happens by accident. It happens to somebody who is deliberate about wanting to achieve a certain thing. 
No, a lot of people can say, yeah, that's cliche, George, a positive attitude gives positive results. I want to start a business, but so many people are doing it. Yeah. There's going to be something unique about your specific business, your specific product, your specific service. You know, and I've always urged this question to so many people. When you are going to a supermarket and you want to buy, for example, toothpaste, there's a specific toothpaste you will rush and go and get compared to another mm -hmm. because there are so many toothpastes that are there. But that company did not say because there are so many others, I'm not going to. So the product or service you offer has to be uniquely different compared to the others that are in the market because there are so many car brands, there are so many mobile phone brands, there are so many things to eat over lunch. So you need to be able to create a positive outlook in a product or service you're offering to believe in it yourself. Because if you don't see yourself as a winner, if you don't believe in yourself as an individual, there's nobody who's going to believe in your product or service. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing on this planet, especially to those who begin their side hustle or their businesses, yes, you might start where you are today, but trust you may always have the bigger picture of growth, of becoming one of the top sought after businesses in the field that you are in. Mm -hmm. And everything, 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 that was created by God. Everything was meant to grow. Be it a little baby, be it uh, whatever, a business, be it anything, be it a church, be it an organization. The purpose of anything existing is to grow. A tree grows. You know, Everything was meant to grow. So when you see whatever you are doing, not growing, it goes back to the essence of the mindset because your mindset is where everything begins. And if you don't have a growth mindset, you're definitely going to shrink and your life is not going to progress in any way. Can you speak to those people that uh, more as uh, George is doing this business or Nyasha is doing this, let me try it. But they don't have the passion or the gift in this in this field. But because Ningi is doing it, let me also try it. And they, f they find out they're not growing and they feel this thing is not working for me. What, can, what do you say to, 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 to those people? You know, I always tell people that um, don't do things just because John, Jimmy, Jane, Susan, Chinashe are doing it. Mm -hmm. Always do things because you have a strength in that specific thing. I think of late, there are so many people who see somebody going overseas and getting clothes mm -hmm. or somebody who opened a tuck shop and they think, hey, let me do this, I can do it better. You know, you need to go along with the things that are already in you that complement you. If you're passionate about it, that's, that's the most important thing. But if you're after only monetary uh, incentive, it's not going to work. So I always urge people that find your own niche, find what it is you're good at. Because trying to be like Nyasha is different. Because Nyasha, you could start in your own air conditioning company called Nyasha Air. Mm -hmm. But then there's a difference with what drives me and what drives you. There's a time you face hardships and you don't have sales and you think you're failing. But then that's not it. There are seasons in everything. It's just like people who sell blankets, right? Mm -hmm. That's their speciality. The people who sell ice creams, right? There's a time and a season where their businesses are not going to flourish. There are times people who farm tobacco or maize, right? It has to be a passion. It's not, ah, I'm going to do it. But then the people who are farming, remember, there's a time for sowing and a time for harvesting, right? But then there's also a time you go without for a couple of months. What are you going to do during those months if all you did was just copy and paste? So you need to understand your industry. And I feel a lot of people don't understand the industries they're going into because they just see, wow, you know, they're making mega profits. But you need to also be able to distribute your profits to cater for you, especially in the down times when the seasons are low, in order for you to continue doing business and running successfully. So to people who are wanting to start and do something like somebody else is doing, it has to be your passion. It has to be something you love to do. Not just these days. So you know what, let me do this. Because if you do that, you're destined to fail. Research on that specific field. Know the harvest time and the seeding time know the profits and etc and then you know you can get into it with full knowledge not just see neighbors who bought a new car 
and you know you think hey they bought a new car i can do it too but remember these are people of agara in that business for a long time mm -hmm. and they're now at a maturity stage and you're just starting so i, I wouldn't um, encourage people to get into something just because it's making money understand it thoroughly invest time in it and understand that in the thing called life and success there's no microwave solution mm -hmm. you don't run a business for a year and think you can buy a house and a car every good thing that happens in life takes time every great thing that happens in life takes even longer mm -hmm. so when you see these get rich quick schemes there's no open a tax shop and make profits uh, sooner than later something will catch up with you because you'll be doing things which are not right to get the mega profits in that thing. So I'm, I'm sure in, in your journey you have had times where you were really like on, on, on top, top tire, at the top of the mountain and what, because you could have stopped then, mm. but what kept you wanting to keep growing? Yeah. What kept you wanting to keep growing? Because I want to speak to that person who's hit their first, I don't know, million, billion, right? And anybody can stop there and say, ah, I've arrived. Mm -hmm. But what kept you going, even though that, you, even though you succeeded? Wow. So I remember in 2012, I got, um, we got our first award as pro air, mm -hmm. right? Top. Uh, it was the upcoming entrepreneur and then years later we got upcoming entrepreneur and then businessman and then a whole lot of other awards mm -hmm. now one thing about success that's going to dampen and hinder a lot of people is when success happens you get a big head and you think you have arrived mm -hmm. but the thing with success it's not a destination right mm -hmm. success is something that constantly needs to be upgraded because one thing I say is that nothing grows in the comfort zone. So when you get an award, when you've built a house, when you've got your first 10,000, 20, 100,000, it doesn't mean you stop there. You need to constantly be hungry for more so that you can be and achieve a whole lot more than previous generations before. Now, when we look at Africa as a continent, um, one thing about our businesses that are being run mm -hmm. right now, African started starting businesses, right? Most of them have not been passed on to the second generation. Why? Because there's been a lack of a growth mindset. Most businesses we grew up knowing have been run by that existing owner. Once the owner dies, everything dies. Everything dies. And that's not a good way of running an enterprise and a business. So with whatever business we are running, let's not let it be about me, 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 me. Let's set up structure. You know, growing up, I knew there were so many past companies, mm -hmm. very successful businesses, mm -hmm. but then they didn't have the mindset like that of, you know, across where they've been left generational wealth. Mm -hmm. They're living for me. I want to be seen. I want to drive good. I want this. And you know what? It never gets on to the next generation. So it's important even for us as we are do starting our businesses and our enterprises, let's have the long haul. You know, the word of God says you should be a blessing to the next and next and next generation. Mm -hmm. So with whatever business you're doing, even though you're starting, let it be something that grows and lives beyond you because you've got proper structure around it. So when we get money, let's just not think consume, consume, consume. You know, let's think invest, invest, invest. And, you know, pay ourselves a little to keep ourselves going okay. so that we can, you know, become a better generation in the long haul. Is it something that you're teaching your children? You know, personally, you know, I thank God for the lessons I learned from my own father mm -hmm. and mother and also the mentorship that I got. You know, the best thing my father ever gave me was exposure and great education in a sphere where there were people who had, you know, well off, far well off kids. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best thing that uh, Nicodemus and Teresa Munengwa did for me to make sure that they invested in us as children to expose ourselves to a different mindset. And the schools we went to messed up our minds not to think average and locally, but think of the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And um, that's one thing definitely I've been teaching my children. I think every morning to those who follow me, um, I do what's called the school and diaries. It's now going to be holiday time. During mm -hmm. holidays, my kids need to understand what it is dad does at pro air, air conditioning. 
and they go around with me, we go and see some customers. They understand physically, oh, this is what a mid-war split aircon looks like. This is what, oh, this is car aircon regassing. So they understand the concept. And that's a challenge to many entrepreneurs and business owners. You know, there are some business owners who their wives don't even know where they get the stock. Mm -hmm. There are some business owners who their children has never seen dad um, at work. They only see dad at home. They have never visited the workplaces of their parents. And this is a culture which is wrong. Because you see with other um, races, during holidays, if the dad is a farmer, the kids go to the farm over the holiday. If the dad owns a shop in town during the holiday, the kids are getting grooming and training in the field of expertise that their parents who are entrepreneurs are doing. So this is also a mindset that we need to encourage especially in our young children. Because it will be very difficult when a kid now is 18, 19, now you want to bring them to work, to say this is what we do. It will be very difficult for them to understand that concept and what it is exactly you're doing. So with everything, it's good to you know, introduce them young. It's never too late. You know, bring them in, you know, pay them something whilst they're working during the holiday. Encourage them to work for their money so that you know, you're building a legacy of a business. You know, it reminds me, I was um, at Borodeo at a food outlet shop mm -hmm. and I was surprised one of the owners had their own child working and saving and clearing the tables. And I was surprised to say, wow, this is the son of the owner. This guy is a multi-millionaire, but his son is cleaning the table. And that's how it is because I think of Anoya Mazuano are very spoiled. They have everything. They have the latest phones. Mm -hmm. They don't have to work for much. But then if you understand, Kuti, for a business to succeed, you have to start from the bottom. It's a mindset, right? And now that son who was uh, working as a waiter, understanding people shouting, yeah, you should have done this, that, because they don't know who he is. Mm -hmm. He's getting grooming and training on understanding business at a shop floor level. Then now when he goes behind the desk as the FD or the chief advisor, he understands how things start at the bottom and the challenges the shop floor workers have. That way you can understand that even if the father goes today, he will understand how to run the organization and the business. And this is the key thing that I think as businesses we're lacking because we're not involving you know, our, our, families. our families and that's why businesses are not going to the next generation because uh, I think this generation especially is raising a lot of kids who have everything. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the greatest things I was taught, it's not what you leave for your children, but it's what you teach them, what you train them, that's going to make them successful or not in the future. Because there are many people who've left very successful enterprises, but because they did not train their children how to run those empires, they were sold for a loaf of bread and um, that's that it died down and whatever legacy you had is no longer going to be there you just opened a can of worms it's 17 minutes to one hustle heart with george billionaire we're talking if you're not growing you are shooting kids i was a child the kind of child that inherited stuff from my, my dad whenever he was getting rid of a laptop Whenever he's getting rid of a phone, he's yeah. uh, is, whenever he's upgrading, he's upgrading. So mm -hmm. I always got hand-me-downs. But I, one day I asked him, but why are you giving, why can't you buy me just a new one? Because mm -hmm. I'm going to college. Why can't you just give me a new one? He's like, yeah. no, I need you to appreciate so that you understand the importance of working mm. for, for if you want to get something you need to work for it and you need to, you need to earn it yeah. so he taught me the spirit of hard work and how important it is when i buy something for myself now i appreciate it more because i know the value of hard work of getting it i mm. treat it even better than just being given but what stops people from growing i asked you how uh, you kept growing but what stops Munu from growing in life? You know, I think one of the greatest challenges that people face on this planet called Earth is something called fear, right? The only thing that can stop something from growing is fear. If you look at everything, um, why, are you, why is your business not growing? It's because there's something you're fearing. Why are you not starting a side hustle? I think it will fail. So there's a fear of the unknown 
which people have. And that's what's going to cause people from growing. People are so comfortable in a comfort zone, right? Mm. They are fearful of doing anything extra because they had a place called a comfort zone. And at the comfort zone, there's nothing that ever grows when you're comfortable, nothing. There's nothing that will grow when you are comfortable. There are people right now who are comfortable staying where they are staying. You know, I always say this to people who are staying at houses their parents built. Um, that's not their purpose. There's a time for you to be a child, and there's a time for you to be an adult. Mm. And if you are not adulting well, you will remain a child. And that thing is not good, because you will never ever start your own family under your own parents' house. You will never become financially who you want to be, still under the umbrella of your children. So it's important people get rid of this fear. And you know, I, I've, I've said it, and I'm gonna say it again. You know, um, fear has held so many people back from fulfilling their full potential in life. Because everybody here listening to us today, imagine if whatever you did succeeded. And if you can imagine that, why is it you are not trying? And what happens with people who don't try anything, they get the exact same results. They will blame the weather, they will blame the government, they will blame everybody, but they don't take responsibility on blaming themselves. And what you will hear from people who have made it in life, they have tried more times, they have attempted at something more times than people who are average and people who are not growing. That's why they excelled. For me to be where I am today, Pro A is not the first business I started, right? Mm. It's not. There's so many things I did. When we began the master class, there were three, four people, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't mean that I was supposed to stop, but now the master class is full, right? Mm -hmm. But then guess what? The difference is I did not fear that ah, it's only four people came, so I don't think it's a good idea. And that's the same thing with life and with business. The greatest secret to getting ahead is getting started. And getting started is getting rid of the four letter word called fear. Because that word has held so many people back. The fear of the unknown, the false evidence appearing real to you. Imagine your excuse complements your fear, which is why people will remain poor, broke, and in the same place and not growing in their lives because of that one thing and because they're comfortable. So once you get sick and tired of being sick and tired of being where you are, mm. you will jump off ship. And to all the people who I know who have ever made it, they just got fed up of their lives. They got fed up of being ordinary. They said, you know what? There's something better, man. Let me just try. Let me just do it. And that, 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 that is something that is so true. To people who have made it, they will tell you that. You know what, I just started, and the first month it didn't work, second, third, after 12 months, hey, it began to blossom and work. And that's the thing that sets people apart. But to others, they have a seed, but they are scared of putting it into the soil. They are scared of the unknown. But behind the doors of your greatest fears, like I've always say, lies your greatest treasures. So if ever you are going to grow, you're going to have to bust that door open and go the territory that is unknown and go and do something that hasn't been done. Because the definition of insanity is doing the exact same things over and over again mm -hmm. and expecting different results. But what people lack and do not understand is that they don't have time. This thing called time my watch is ticking right now, mm -hmm. right? We're getting closer to the top of the hour and very soon it's going to be the end of the year. But at the end of the day, besides the gray hairs on your head and besides your age growing up, what is it that you have grown as an individual? What things have changed? What have you acquired besides just your age and new clothes and new shoes? Has your business grown? As an individual, have you updated certain things in your life and you can tangibly see growth? But because, like I said, that fear element, it has helped so many people. Many people listening to me now have got fear in them. 
and it's unfortunate because with fear very closely behind you is poverty very closely many people who have fear will never achieve or become what they're supposed to do or become so it's important we get rid of fear i'm not going to dwell a lot in the bible it says do not fear i don't know how many times one day yeah. for every day of the year mm. but still there are people who are saying ah but there are so many people no george had it good i think somebody gave him a loan i think somebody did something for george to be where he is mm. no george just got rid of fear george was earning 300 dollars once upon a time things were not adding up and george decided to jump off the ship that he was currently on course and you know what? if you if you keep doing the same things you're going to end up at this destination of just being an ordinary civilian an ordinary human being mm -hmm. but only you cost the way your ship goes and sometimes it's going to take some drastic action for me it had to be drastic because i had to make a, ch a choice and that choice has led me now to being somebody who is who he is today but to many people um you're going to just be somebody who is full of fear. And I've said this, and I hope somebody is hearing this for the first time. Yeah. When you die and go to heaven, you're going to be shown a preview video of what you could have been. Hey. I've said this, and you're going to be shown, no, Nyasha, you were supposed to become an internationally known entrepreneur, philanthropist, community builder, author, writer, real estate guru. But you, because of fear, you remained at your J-O-B, your just over broke place of employment, and you never fulfilled your God-ordained purpose. We spoke about this when we were talking, you were not born to be average. Yeah. But most people don't see that, you know what, people think they are here by accident because of the way they were raised up. But nothing happens by accident. Whether you were born out of wedlock, in wedlock, whichever way you came on this planet, there's a specific purpose, you are alive today but then because of what you choose to do those who get rid of fear i tell you will live the best life ever but those who hold on to their fears will find excuses to blame will find reasons and the reasons will be very intelligent well elaborated mm -hmm. but then they will never make them grow because our purpose and our mandate from when you were born you were a child and now you're a grown man and woman god's purpose is for you to grow in all the areas of your life if you're just growing your age alone and the things around you materially are not growing it's an error according to god's purpose and his plan for you and i urge people who have heard this message today that don't wait until it's too late you won't be able to change the lives of your children when you're in heaven by possibly doing things we are supposed to do in the time where you had the air and the oxygen and the strength to go and hustle and create some form of you know, financial freedom for your children so that they can at least start from where you left off and it's not as hard but with majority of people the only thing they will leave their children is absolutely nothing and that's going to be a, a great disaster because that was never the intent and purpose of God. Do you know one thing I, I told myself at the beginning of this year, I continue to remind myself is, when I die, whenever that's going to be, 50,000 years later, but when I die, I want to have had lived my purpose. That which this has to be done. Every single box has got to mm. be lived and ticked. So I want to have done that. And you just opened, like I said, you opened a can of worms on mm. generational wealth, on the importance of introducing your children to um, knowledge that you have acquired, not keeping it to yourself and mm. not living with fear. But we do not have these um, areas where, or people who speak to fathers who are doing either business or who are in a field of some sort to speak to them and say, look, yes, you're versed in this field, but is your ch does your child understand where, how you're making this money? Does yeah. your child understand how to manage this money? Yeah, true. So I would like to employ you to do that. This, this, is why, this is why, number one, we're not so hard. And there are a lot of dads who've watched this mm -hmm. 
uh, who are watching this or who are going to hear this. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, with the GB Mentorship Masterclass we have, mm -hmm. we've got, you know, various programs for school leavers. We've got various programs, even for startup entrepreneurs. And these are some of the things we teach at the GB Mentorship. Mm -hmm. And I think I've urged a lot of people, it's there on Instagram, on Facebook, find out some of the things we do. Because there's some things that as parents, you cannot teach your children, but you can have somebody else, you know, instill that knowledge in your kids, especially more so when they are grown, because of maybe your parenting style and how you grew up with the children. Mm -hmm. You know, you it's very difficult to train an old dog new tricks. Oh, it's very but then it's, it's important then maybe to enroll them in a place where they get the knowledge, the revelation that, listen, I don't want to start something different when already we have an existing business running. And you know, for me, I, I fail to understand, especially African children who have parents who have succeeded in something, instead of just falling in line and complementing the business that your parents have already started, it's financially beneficial to you. That's your legacy. But you find them, they want to go on and do something else. Not a growth mindset. That's actually um, sabotaging something that your parents built many years ago and then soon it's going to die but it was already a stream of income it was already something that was bringing in money and you know it's important to fall in line and support the existing vision then going and making somebody else's enterprise grow which you don't have any shareholding in at all you know so that for me is something that really you know gets to me to not understand why you know these businesses are not then taken over by their children but with the other races it's amazing you know, we want to go and become masters and PhD of this, that, and the other. But then your parents have an existing business. Go and get and study something in line that complements the enterprise that already has been built by your parents mm -hmm. and feed into that. But then, you know, people have a different perspective. But then if ever we're going to live a legacy and a generational wealth for many years to come, we need to get that wisdom and that knowledge because starting and establishing something called a brand does not happen overnight. So there are, there are many young people who are very overzealous to think that they can do this. But then trust you me, um, with the other races that I know out there, they fall in line, they complement, they get into the already existing structures. Like I said earlier on, the kids become the waiters, they understand from shop floor they start by cleaning the floor, washing the cars, understanding things at the lowest level management, mm -hmm. that when they do then get the office at the top, they understand how the business runs from bottom all the way to top, which then sets them apart. Anzi Pana, but thank you for such an interesting discussion around building successful enterprises. How, and how important is knowledge on financial literacy helps in ensuring that startups or small businesses extend beyond one generation? I have just observed the most um, indigenous and formal businesses lack bookkeeping records for basic decision making. Jaka Oma. One of the greatest challenges with us, especially the Africans, uh, because we want to make everybody understand that I have arrived. Mm -hmm. Whenever you make a little bit of money, instead of reinvesting it and growing the business, because we never grew up with it, once we make money, we think it's consistently going to keep coming the manner it's coming. And then we go, we buy a brand new car, we travel, we buy the most expensive cars, and then guess what? After a couple of months, that business is shattered and gone. Because every business that exists make some form of money here and there. But then what creates a business that lasts is investing back into that business. And only when a business is 10 plus years on, can you then start looking at really sacrificing to then purchase something that's within good reason. But majority of our young entrepreneurs believe success is driving a nice car, looking good, smelling good, you know, making sure that you're bowling, popping bottles. Mm -hmm. But instead of being um, investors, um, our startup entrepreneurs are consumers. They spend their money recklessly. And this is why they don't grow. But we need to learn um, from those who've gone before us, other very successful entrepreneurs in the country and abroad. And bookkeeping and financial intelligence is one of the key elements 
that makes people become great and successful? So that's an amazing question. And uh, I hope that answers that lady and a whole lot of other people who are out there.